This is called motion blur and this is used to portray sense of motion and this is exactly what we are going to create today. We'll be taking up this image and throw in some effects and elements and completely transform it into something like this. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Explorian, it's me Didi again. And if you don't know, this channel is all about designing in Photoshop and sharing the process with you. And in the process, we discuss various tools, techniques and tips and tricks which will improve your workflow and level up your graphic design game. The effect we are going to create today is called Acid Motion Effect and the reason for that is, frankly, I don't know. If any one of you know why it is so, please let me know in the comments down below. In my last video, if you remember, we have used a gradient map. We'll also be using it today, but in a slightly different way to create a totally different effect. We'll also be adding some filters and even some textures also. If you're with me for quite some time, then you know I divide my videos into steps for better understanding. They are here along with their timestamps. Okay, enough of talks. Let's quickly get to the screen and start working. I'll select my usual A4 size canvas. You can choose the canvas of your choice and then we bring in the image. I have chosen a black and white image. If you are using a colored image, then you have to do an extra step of converting it into a black and white and you can use any process you like. It doesn't make much of a difference, but turning it to black and white is important because we are going to use the gradient map on our image. I'll rename this layer as subject and then make a duplicate copy of the layer by pressing the controller command J and keeping the top layer selected. We then go to filter menu to apply our first filter which is inside the blur option and that is motion blur. We'll first adjust the distance slider here and take a relatively higher number. There are no set numbers here. It totally depends on you how you want the look and feel of the poster. I will keep it here and then adjust the angle of the blur. I think 30 is better. I have another poster making video using the motion blur effect but the look and feel of that poster is totally different. If you are interested you can find that by clicking on the high button above and the link of the same will be given in the description as well. We'll then add a layer mask to this layer and take the brush tool, right click to open the brush settings and select the soft round brush. Adjust the brush size by pressing the right and left square bracket keys. Foreground color should be black. If it's not, then press the X key to toggle between the foreground and the background color and we'll paint like this to hide the blur behind the mask and reveal the subject beneath. You can adjust the brush size, change the foreground color to white and paint to bring back the blur. We can repeat this process as many times we want. We can even adjust the flow of the brush by sliding like this but just like adjusting the opacity which I discussed in the last video, we can do it in a better way. Make sure the brush tool is active. We will hold the shift key and then press the number from 1 to 0 on our keyboard. Like I am pressing the shift plus 5 and our flow is 50%. Let's change it to 20% and for that we will press shift plus 2 and it's done. I'm going to stop here. If you're liking this already, which I'm very much hopeful of, I would request you to hit the like button just down there and please subscribe to the channel for more such contents. We'll select both the layers and convert them into a smart object. But why smart object? I will show you in a moment. Then we go to the filter again and this time click on liquify. A new liquify window will open. Make sure the forward warp tool here is active and now we will just click and drag like this. Do it very carefully and restrict yourself from overdoing it, otherwise it will be all distorted. This much will be fine and we'll hit OK. I think I'll be doing some refinements in this area and here comes the advantage of a smart object. We'll double click here on the icon of the subject layer. A separate canvas will open with our original subject layers and now we can edit it as we like. When we are done, we'll press Ctrl or Command S to save and then close the canvas and our main canvas will be automatically updated with the changes we just made. There are some problems here. It happened during the use of the liquify tool. So we'll double click on the liquify here and drag it like this to rectify it. And now it's done. Let me show you another trick. I think I have overdone a little in this area. 
there's a way of correcting it we'll go to the liquify workspace again and here we will find this reconstruct button we'll click on this and we get this slider and now when we slide it to the left you will notice it's kind of undoing all the things we have done earlier isn't it amazing i will keep it here and hit ok and now in the next step we'll be applying the gradient map for that we go here and click to open the menu and then click on gradient map my last video was all about gradient map and in that i've used it to create a very different pop art effect if you're interested you know where to find it up there and down in the description we'll then click here to open the gradient editor for a start we'll be selecting a gradient from the preset and then we'll hit ok then we'll check both this reverse and dither options on we'll again open the gradient editor and now click on the left handle here and then click here to change its color then do the same for the right handle now we are going to add a new handle here so that we can introduce a different color into the image and for that just click here to add the handle and then change its color we're gonna create another handle here and now we can slide these diamond like handles in between to further adjust the gradient i think it's looking good what do you think the eyes are looking little gloomy it would have been better if it's a little bright so we'll select the layer mask of the gradient layer and again take the brush tool make the brush size smaller about the size of the eyeball adjust the flow of the brush to 20% and keeping the foreground color black we'll paint like this there is a subtle difference but i'm not really very satisfied we'll take care of that a little later before that we will add a solid color adjustment layer above all the layers keep it black and then go to filter and then noise and click on add noise it will ask us to rasterize or convert the layer into a smart object so that the filter can be applied you can do either of the two i will click on rasterize because the layer contains nothing just the noise grains and there is no issue of resizing it so we won't have to worry about the pixel loss in case of resizing but if you want to work non-destructively and intend to alter it later on then smart object is the way to go i'll keep it relatively higher number and won't change anything else and hit ok and then we'll change the blend mode of this layer to overlay see how the noise has added so much of character giving it somewhat grungy feel depending on your likings you can adjust the opacity of the noise layer it's better to clip the gradient layer to the subject layer i will keep the opacity of the noise layer to 50 percent we are going to take the grungy feel to the next level and how are we going to do that by adding some textures to our composition and where are you gonna find them? At texturelabs.com. Here you get a wide variety of textures ranging from water, rock, paper, and whatnot. Believe me, their collections are extensive. And do you know what's the best part? They're all free. You can use them in your personal as well as commercial projects. You can even get video tutorials on how to use them in your projects. So my opinion about them, highly recommended. We'll bring the texture file onto the canvas and rotate and resize it to fit our canvas and this time change the blend mode of the texture layer to screen. We'll adjust the opacity a little so that it blends well. To make it blend even further, we'll double click here on the blank space of the texture layer and to open the layer style dialog box and work with these blend if sliders. We'll grab the white slider of this layer which is the texture layer here and bring it towards the left to blend it. Hold the Alt or Option key and click on the sliders to split it and take the right half to the extreme right and now adjust the other half to make the blend smoother. Then grab the black slider of the underlying layer which is basically our noise layer. Split it by holding the Alt or Option key and move the slider towards the right and adjust as per our choice. I'm done and I'll hit OK. We'll bring another texture image onto the canvas and repeat the same process. Can you see the difference? Now we'll be adding a little shine in the eyes and for that, just above the gradient layer, we'll create a new layer and take the lesser tool and make a rough selection of the eyeball like this. Don't worry, there's no need to be very precise. And now since our background color is white, we will press Ctrl or Command Backspace to fill it with white 
and then change its blend mode to overlay. Press Ctrl or Command D to deactivate the selection. We then add a layer mask to this layer. Again take the brush tool, take the soft round brush and with the black as foreground color, we'll paint on the edges. We have to make the flow of the brush 100% and we can do that by simply pressing the Shift plus 0 on the keyboard and continue painting. And now you can see the difference. I forgot to rename the layer. This will be Eye Glow. And let's call this Noise. Now we know which layer is what. Let's group all these layers by holding the shift key and clicking on the topmost and the bottommost layer and then press Ctrl or Command G and rename the group as Composite. And now we'll be moving on to the next and last step where we'll be adding some text to complete the poster. We'll activate the text tool but this time we'll take the vertical text tool and click anywhere on the canvas and then type in the text. Change the color to white. Increase the size. I'm using the font Montserrat because I want to keep the text extremely simple. You can choose any font as per your preference. I'll also increase the spacing between the letters. I will place it here and add a new text and it will be just one letter. We're gonna make some copies of this text and for that hold the order option key and when the cursor changes to a double arrow like this, just click and drag and then double click to edit it. I'll be adding some more text following the same procedure. We'll be giving the text a stroke effect and for that we have to go to the layer styles again and click on the strokes here, bring down the fill opacity to zero, adjust the size of the stroke a little and hit OK. We have to apply the same stroke effect to this text also and let me show you a way of quickly doing it without going through the whole process. We'll hold the Alter Option key again and click once on the stroke here and drag and then drop onto the other text layer and the same effect will be applied to this text as well. We'll do the same for the other text also. But the effect doesn't look the same. It is. We just have to bring down the fill opacity. I'll do some more refinements. And our poster is ready. Did you like it? The possibility of using the gradient map are endless and I'll be showing you that in my future videos. Till then you can watch this video to learn another way of using it.